And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, my name is Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Crossfire. Uh, this is in a world, set in a world of uh, Spectre Ops and is designed by the same designer, Emerson Matsuchi. Uh, he showed me this game uh, a couple years ago. We were at a, a game convention. He showed me the game, and when it was done, I said, I want this for Dice Tower Essentials. <laughs> I was so excited about the game. There was a whole lot less social deduction games back then, and this was one that really had me excited. Uh, at the time, it wasn't set in, the, in that world. It was just a game about stopping an assassination or making the assassination happen. So this is a social deduction game. It is for five plus players. There's a lot going on in this game. Let's check it out. There are two ways to play this game, crossfire mode and sniper mode. So let's take a look at crossfire mode first. There are four main roles that are going to be in every game. There's the VIP, who's trying not to get shot. Uh, the assassin, who's trying to kill the VIP. The agent's trying to protect the VIP. And the bystander is just trying not to get shot. There's other roles too that can be included, possibly a red decoy, who's on the assassin's team. A blue decoy on the VIPs. You can have more assassins, more agents or just a decoy who's trying to get shot. <laughs> They're the opposite of the bystander. So let's say we're playing a seven player game, so we would need seven roles. So we'd have one VIP, we would have two agents, we would have two assassins, we'd have one decoy, and we would have one bystander. All these roles are gonna be shuffled up and given to the different players. Now, once everyone has their card, so it would happen like this, everyone has their card, they look at it, and then they pass them to the person on their left. So you then look at your new card that you got. Then one player starts, they're gonna take the three cards next to them. They're gonna shuffle these, give them back. You then count three from that person, one, two, three. That person will do the same thing, shuffle them, and then we count three more, and then this person would shuffle them like this. All right, so everyone now has a new card, and you know a little bit about the cards of the people next to you. Now everyone's going to be trying to discuss who's getting shot by who, who's, you know, who's the, who are the assassins, who's the VIP. What you can do here is, if you notice the card, you can have one point towards you and claim to be something. I'm an agent, I'm a bystander, I'm a VIP, I'm not telling you who I am. So everyone's going to do that, and you have three minutes to figure this out. After three minutes, everyone at simultaneously, you'll count three, two, one, will point a finger at another player. After that's done, you'll say, if you're not armed, then drop your gun, your finger, because only people with guns can shoot, which is agents and assassins. Then the agents shoot first. So the, let's say this agent shot this person, they would reveal their thing. Oh, they shot the VIP. Well, they just lost the game. <laughs> Otherwise, then the assassins get a chance to shoot, and if they shoot the VIP, they win. And of course, the bystanders not on either team, they just win as long as they are not shot, and the Decoy is not really on any team. They win as long as they are shot. Everyone else is on the blue or the red team. Now in sniper mode, the same thing is very similar, but one person is the sniper. Everyone knows this at the beginning of the game. Their goal is to take out the assassins. So you'll put two assassins with a bunch of other roles in the game, do the same thing, and then everyone's trying to convince the sniper who to shoot. And after three minutes, the sniper will stick these cards in front of the people that they shoot. If they take out the assassins, they win. If they don't, if they shoot the VIP, they lose. But otherwise, let's say they shoot the bystander and they shoot uh, one of the assassins. The other assassin has a chance then to shoot and, pick, and if they pick the VIP, then the assassins will win. And then there's a few other roles that you can throw in the mix if you want to. We have the bomber who just, if you're not shot, you win and everyone else loses. You can play with a peacekeeper. You win if no bystanders are shot. And the bodyguard here counts as an agent. You're just protecting the person that you point at. So they, they have to figure out who the VIP is, and they can try to protect them. And then you can have multiple bystanders also if you want. So that is how you play. OK, at the beginning of the, the video, I said that there was a lot going on in this game. And that's true as in the back and forth. But the actual gameplay itself is very, very simple. 
Uh, it's a lot like a lot of social deduction games. You are basically just trying to convince people that you are not who you are or that you are who you are back and forth. So we'll get back to that in a second, but there's a couple things I want to talk about. First of all, the theme. Now, they put this in the world of Crossfire, so it's not in our real world, which I think is good because assassinations are not a topic that is really that friendly. Even in this world, some people still might have a problem with someone trying to assassinate a, some very important person, even if that person's evil, which we pretend that they are. Um, so just keep that in mind. But the artwork here and everything puts us in some futuristic alternative world type thing. Card quality is good, but as with all these games, I would sleeve them because you're going to be pushing these rolls around a lot. It is very easy, though, when you flip a card over to instantly know what that card is. And it tells you how you win on your card. Well, it tells you how to win in crossfire mode. doesn't tell you how to win in sniper mode, but it, they're, they're close enough. The rules are easy. The game also comes with a timer to keep things moving. And overall, it, it just it flows really, really well. The game does need five players, so that's a thing, right? If you have four players, this isn't going to work. And five players is the lower amount. I, I played it with many different player counts, and I want to say like seven or eight is where I like it. But let me tell you this. There are two modes in here, Crossfire and Sniper. I like Crossfire. I love, 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 love Sniper. That is my favorite way to play. And uh, with the people that I played with, seems to be the favorite way to play with that. Crossfire is a good game. And other than the shuffle mechanism, and we'll get back to that, it's very similar to other games like Cashing Guns and you know things like that. Sniper feels different. It puts all the pressure on one person. That person's job is to sit there and figure out who's lying to them or not. And at the three minutes, they got to go, you and you. And so everyone is sitting there back and forth. The VIP doesn't want to be too blatantly obvious, although sometimes they are like, I'm the VIP. And it's, and it's hilarious because when two people claim to be the same thing, and you know how many of that role are in the game, you're like, okay, you both can't be agents. You both can't be on my team. You both can't be helping me. So that's a lot of fun to go back and forth there. Um, and, and I really enjoy that. And, and some people don't like being the sniper. You don't have to be. Just play the regular game. Let pick someone else to be the sniper. And that sniper is going to sit there and like, ah, oh, who's lying to me and who's not? Games are also really fast because there's a three-minute timer and then a discussion at the end. Or, or in the sniper case, that's just three minutes in total. So it is really, really quick games. And you can play this over and over and over and over again. And I have. What makes this game unique is that card shuffling at the beginning. You know your role, of course, obviously you can see your role, and you know the role of the person, or you know a card that that person handed you, and you know a card that you handed this person. So you can say, look, I had the assassin card, and it's in one of these three cards. It might not be me, it, I mean, it's definitely not me, but it's either Bob or Sally. And since Bob is claiming to be the agent, and I'm the agent, Bob's definitely the assassin. Bob says, are you kidding me? Same thing, back. So we sit there and argue back and forth about it. And I, that card thing is really neat because you have a lot of information and you kind of know where cards are. You don't know exactly where they are. So I could sometimes, I, I played in a game like, hey, everyone on this side of the table is telling the truth because I didn't see any assassin cards at all. So it definitely has to be at that end of the table. And over there, they burst into fury that Tom Vassell's a liar, which I'm not. Um, and so the game is really entertaining in that regard. And again, if you mess up, big deal. It's short and it's fast. There's a lot of social deduction games out there, all right? This, in my opinion, is in the top tier of them because it's unique in how the cards are dealt out. That's a really unique but simple method to see a lot of different roles. It's fast, I mean really fast, and the sniper method's really neat where it puts that pressure on that one person to figure out who's lying to them or not. Very highly recommend it from me, Crossfire. Dice Tower of Judgment, excellent! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Oh.